Hello and welcome to Romero Threads on YouTube where it's all about embroidery. In today's video, I am going to dive deep into the four most important consumable items in embroidery. These are four items you have to have to have to know for all your embroidery projects. These four items at times can become overwhelming and that's just because there is so many options to choose from. So my goal today in this video is to simplify all this information especially when we're dealing with different sizes, different weights, different codes, especially codes that are different from brand to brand. Okay, so we're gonna make sense out of all this information. All right, so let's start with consumable number one. Okay, of course, very, very important, and that is our thread. Of course, it's obvious, right, that the thread is extremely, extremely important not only because that's what you see, the final product is what you see, okay? But if you have good quality type thread, then your project moves smoother, okay? So I have my list here of important information you have to know. So let's talk about the characteristics of thread. As many of you know, when you're shopping around for thread, there is pretty much unlimited options, okay? So we wanna make sure when you are choosing your thread, you're choosing the correct options. These are your main two weights for machine embroidery. Okay, of course, there are a ton, a ton of different other options. 99% of your time, you're, you're dealing with 40 weight or 60 weight. Your 40 weight, I boxed it here because really, that's what you're mostly going to use, okay? That's just your everyday weight of thread, okay? Everybody's used to seeing this size of thread. And 60 is for your more detailed type information. So the 40 weight, that's just your everyday thread that you're always going to use, all right? Good for just normal logo size, your most common designs, 40 weight. And now when we get into the details, all right, when we start talking about little small details, especially small text, now we're in this department with the 60 weight thread. Once you start getting into very, very specific type projects, now you can start experimenting with other sizes of thread. But usually when you're doing commercial work for your high quantity type projects, you're kind of in this area right here. Now let's talk about our types of thread. All right, so I wrote down here three main types of thread. In reality, there's probably five or six different types of thread, but these are the, the first three are your most common ones. All right, but this one here, boxed in, same thing, okay? We, we here at our shop, we do hats, polo shirts, patches, all right? We're, we're, kind, we're, we're, we're working with polyester here, all right? Polyester has that nice shine and it's also laundry friendly, all right? So it's not gonna fade, it's not gonna, it, it can take a beating, okay? That polyester thread can take a beating with the elements, with the wash, and everything else that comes with the lifespan of a garment. We also have other ones, all right? Other specialty type thread, all right? So rayon, rayon has this specific type look that some people prefer, okay? Make sure your machine is used to that thread. You have all your settings correctly dialed in to deal with rayon. Same thing with cotton, all right? These are all specialty type thread, all right? You want that certain type of look you don't want that super shiny look that polyester gives you. Now you're going into the very fine details of embroidery. And of course, right, metallic, metallic thread. As many of you know, it takes some skills to work with metallic. And that's just because it, it, it creates a mind of its own. It likes to spin around in all sorts of weird angles. Just like polyester has this nice shine, especially when everything's dialed in, metallic has a very, very fine, fine look okay it even has that like expensive look all right usually when you're working with metallic all right you're pumping up that price okay because not anybody can work with metallic all right other types of uh other types of thread okay that i didn't list here but definitely it's it's in that it's in the arena for those who are in that field you have that glow in the dark thread very popular right now you also have your fire retardant thread. Very popular with your frontline type work, okay? Paramedics, firemen, police, anybody that's working with certain type of chemicals, all right? It's very, very popular in that field. 
when you are buying your thread, all right, quantity, of course, I had to fix it. I had a little typo there, all right, quantity. So most popular one, your 5,500, all right, these are just your regular cones. Now, if you are experimenting with certain colors or you need a color just for a small little project, okay, they do make them smaller. So it's good practice to have different types of colors because you never know when you're going to need specific colors. All right, but most common size, 5,500 yards. And one important piece of information about thread, okay, and that's brands. What brand of thread should I buy, right? That's a big question. That's always a big question. And in reality, everybody has their own favorite thread. The machine we work with loves Madeira. Okay, we like to work with Madeira, so that's what we stay with. Once you find that go-to thread, that, that thread that looks good and works well with your machine, you wanna stick to that thread, especially, okay, especially when you start accumulating all your colors, all right, just to keep all your colors consistent because you will be surprised how easily the color red can shift real quick, all right, from brand to brand. All right, let's talk about consumable item number two, and that is needles. Okay, this is where it starts getting overwhelming because there are thousands and thousands of different types of needles, okay? And the possibility of you buying the wrong one is very likely. As long as you know what all the codes, the different sizes, then it becomes very easy to order. So let's get into the details of needles. The biggest thing about needles, this is just the easiest way to know you're getting the correct needles. All the packaging has codes, all right? So the first one you definitely wanna check is DBK5. Okay, DBK5, that is for machine embroidery, all right? Of course, you always wanna double check with whatever machine you have, okay? Just to make sure this is the correct needle that you need, all right? DBK5. DB1, all right, that is kind of like the area that we work with. The needles that we use is the Gross Beckerts, but you also have the organ, okay, which a lot of this information, all right, is similar, all right. They also have the DBK5, and you also have the Schmitz. Just get familiar with whatever codes these packagings come with, all right. These are the big ones, just to make sure this is the one that separates all the needles to make sure you have the correct one, all right, and that is round shank. Okay. You want to make sure you have round shank and not the flat shank. The flat shanks, those are for your, your different types of sewing machines. So as long as you got these, the basics, okay, you should be in the correct area. And another code that you might see, okay, is G-E-B-E-D-U-R. All right. These are your titanium. Most of all your needles, they're all chrome plated, the regular metal ones. Once you start working with hats or kind of thicker type garment, all right, you want to make sure you get this one, the titanium. And it is said to last twice as long as your regular needle. All right. So if it's going to take a beating, all right, you want to make sure you go here and it's less headaches, less deflections, less thread breaks and all that stuff that goes along with that. Now, once you have your brand, your correct needles, okay, now becomes the most important decision that you have to make, okay? And that is what type of needle are you going to use, all right? Really, the needles are broken down to three different types, okay? You have your sharp, your universal, and your round, all right? So you already know sharps are for your heavy type garment, mostly for hats, or when you work with 3D puff, okay, you wanna work with sharp, you want something that's gonna penetrate through all that different layers of foam and the actual buckram of the hat, okay? You need that extra sharpness, all right? You're in this area here, the RS. And as you can see how I have it laid out, this is the order of sharpness, okay? RS being the most sharp needle that you can get, okay? And now you move, as you move towards the right side, now your needle is becoming a, a little more rounded. All right, so you get to here, the most rounded needle. And the reason why you want a rounded needle, because anything that's stretchy and knit type, okay, you definitely do not want to puncture sharp holes into that type of garment, all right? Because then you're going to start introducing holes into your finished product. All right, so anything like soft sweater, Sherpa, beanies, 
uh, polo shirts, all right, you're kind of in this area here, all right, especially once we're dealing with flat type items that are very stretchy, all right, FG, all right, uh, a lot of times you're very safe in this area, universal area, okay, so if you're dealing with RG, FFG, or R, okay, usually those are considered like your universal, so for everyday type stuff, all right, if you don't want to be changing out needles for every different type of project, okay, usually you're safe in this area. So always good idea to carry these types of needles for everyday use. Okay, let's talk about now the last piece of information that's very, 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 very important, okay? And that is the size of your needles, okay? So now that you selected the correct needle all the information okay now it's the final decision that you got to make all right and that is the size and of course these sizes okay when you first see them all right it doesn't make sense all right but once you kind of stack them up line them up then it starts making sense usually the smallest size okay of course there are smaller sizes but in general your smallest size would be a 65 9 okay so here i have a representation of the size of the hole. If you're dealing with details, if you don't wanna have big punctures and big holes in your garment, okay, you wanna make sure you have a 65-9 type. Okay, and the reason why it's called a 65 is because the size of that hole, okay, so the size, actually the size of that needle, okay, is 0.65 millimeters wide. Okay, so very important, especially when you're digitizing little small details. You should know the minimum size of your sand stitches. Okay, so once you're dealing with sand stitches at this size, you know you have to use 65.9. Now, as you move up in sizes, okay, notice how that hole becomes bigger. Okay, so right here we're at 0.65 millimeter. All right, now here, once you get to the next size, 7010, which is our next size, all right, that's the size that we like to use for polo shirts. Okay, so as you can see, now your needle size, it's not too small, but it's not too big. This is a very friendly size, okay, especially with polos, and especially if you start going into the details of certain logos, all right, very, very good to have. All right, and as you move up in sizes, you will see, okay, you have the 7511, of course, that's everybody's favorite needle, all right? This is just your everyday needle, okay? If you cannot decide what size you should use, okay, it's always a good rule just to go 7511, all right? And then as you move even higher to the 8012, now, your needle size is getting much bigger, okay? Of course, I over-exaggerated here, made it way bigger, but you could kind of see how big our holes, okay, our needles is gonna make into our garment, all right? So 8012, of course, that's good when you're working with hats uh, with the thick buckram, okay, your structure type hats, and of course, especially when you're working with foam. All right, when you're working with foam, you're gonna have uh, more friction, more heat, more deflection. All right, this is where you want an 8012, of course, with the sharp. And also, I didn't list it here, but we do have our 90 needle. It's uh, very good with metallic thread, okay? Just because metallic thread tends to be a little thicker. One thing about these sizes is the eye of the needle becomes bigger too. If you have thicker type thread, Okay, you wanna move up in the size of needles. Okay, let's move on to consumable, number three. Let's talk about item number three. This one here is your bobbin. Now your bobbin, it's like the Achilles heels of your embroidery machine. So it's this little small, small, tiny piece of object that is a make or break on your whole project. So a lot of times if you're struggling with projects being completed, okay, for X amount of reasons, all right, most likely, okay, I would say that it's a very, very high likely possibility that it is because you're bobbing. So even before we even start any type of project, you always wanna make sure that area, that bobbin area is clean, 
all right you always want to spray air you always want to make sure everything is clean ready to go before starting any project so let's go ahead let's get into the details of this very important piece of object which we call the bobbin now the bobbin okay you'll see it as l style or m style okay of course you always want to choose l style do not use m style this is not for regular embroidery machines okay this is for all different types of stuff okay and you will know it's an m style because it's bigger than your l style this here the m style is the size of a quarter okay the ones that we use okay size of a nickel all right so just kind of compare a nickel with the l style and you'll know you got the correct one let's cross that out just so you can be 100 percent sure not to use m style all right unless your equipment does use an m style then use that one now this is always a big question is what type of bobbin should i use you have your paperback the paperback just requires your bobbin to have a spring to kind of keep that to keep it from kind of sticking towards the back of the bobbin and then you have your paperless which we've used here at the shop i'm not a big fan of the paperless i know there got to be somebody that uses that out there there might be a good reason why you would use the paperless this is the popular one all right magnetic okay that's what we've been using for a while here very very good when it comes time for consistency just by the use of its magnets okay it doesn't spin all around unnecessary like you would with uh, the traditional way all right so i would highly recommend using magnetic you see less types of error when you're working with this type of bobbin uh so bobbin when it comes time for ordering very straightforward okay it's you do have different options but your options are very basic biggest thing about your bobbin is you have to make sure you run your eye test consistently okay because your tensions are always constantly changing you always want to make sure before you start a big big project that you are always checking your eye test you are checking your bobbin so for those who want to learn about the eye test all right i'm going to link that video down below under number three the bobbin area also you could keep kind of a mental track of how far along you're going with your bobbin okay usually a bobbin goes anywhere between 35,000 stitches to maybe 42,000 stitches okay so you could do some math in your head let's say you are working on something that has 10,000 stitches you know after your third project it's going to be time to change your bobbin all right because three times 10,000 is 30,000 so now your next project you're going to be at 40,000 so it's going to be time to change that bobbin so sometimes you could kind of work that math in your head and you kind of know when is the next bobbin change let's talk about consumable number four and that is your stabilizer okay consumable number four that is our backing now this is one that can get real confusing at certain times sometimes you don't know whether you're using tearaway or if you're using cutaway sometimes you're using a combination of both cutaway and tearaway all right so there's always certain rules when to use what you already know the old saying if you wear it don't tear it okay meaning if you're gonna put it in the laundry all right you should have cutaway okay don't use tearaway right you you hear that phrase over and over and over and over but we're gonna talk about why we're doing certain things okay when to use cutaway when to use tearaway all right so let's look at the board here okay tearaway versus cutaway it's always the million dollar question is what should i use let's talk a little bit about tearaway all right of course tearaway is everybody's most favorite in a perfect world we would always use tearaway okay and that is because it's very convenient all you got to do is do your project and then you just tear it away you don't have to worry about the details of cutting your your paperback of course the best thing about tearaway is there's less bulkiness that's because you don't have that extra paper hanging on the other side of your garment all right so of course big reason why tearaway is very popular okay and of course it saves time all right because it's less cleaning less little details you got to worry about so the big question is when should you use tearaway okay and the simple answer is the thicker your garment then you should use tearaway okay when your garment is stable enough to kind of hold the stitches on its own so the most common one okay hats of course those are more solid stronger type material 
okay? Also, any type of jackets, all right? When you're dealing with jackets, even towels, okay? Towels, they're not as easily stretchable, okay? So the more stretch you have, the less you want to use tear away, all right? So just kind of give your garment a good stretch. If it holds on tight as you're stretching, then it can be safe to use tear away. All right, but once you start stretching your garment and you feel that garment stretching out, okay, giving some pull, you definitely know you're going to use cutaway. So now let's talk about cutaway. All right, so here I have a note. It prevents puckering. That's the biggest thing about cutaway. That's why we use cutaway. Of course, there are other reasons, right? But the main thing is when you finish embroidering and you take it off the hoop, you don't want that garment to get pulled by the stitches, okay? So the cutaway is gonna keep everything nice and tight without everything kind of bunching up, especially after you wash and you dry that particular piece of garment. That is the time where your puckering is gonna times 10. It's gonna start puckering it's going to start coming into each other if you don't have cutaway. All right. So here the rule of thumb is the more stretchier, the more cutaway you need. We work with polos a lot. Polos have a nice stretch to it. At that point, you always want to use two pieces of cutaway. That's usually the common practice when you're working with polo shirts. The only thing on cutaway is you have to add that extra step of carefully cutting the backside of that backing. Tearaway, cutaway, they come in different weights. You got to be familiar with different weights. The less stretchy, the less weight you need, right? Same thing with cutaway, okay? The more stretchiness, the more weight you need. And they usually come in, in 1.5 ounces, okay? So increments of 1.5, 2 ounces, 3 ounces, all right? If you're working with hats, usually hats, its common weight is 3 ounces, and then with cutaway also, you have for your polo shirt, you have your two ounces, okay? So that's always something you wanna, you wanna kinda play around with, especially the more stitches you have on a polo shirt or on a stretchy type item, the more cutaway you need. So there's two criterias that's gonna dictate how much cutaway you're going to use, okay? So the amount of stretchiness, you gotta increase cutaway, and depending on the amount of stitches you have, you're going to have to increase your cutaway all right and then it's the opposite from tear away all right so you know the stronger your material is okay the less tear away you need but at the same time the more stitches you got then you might have to start increasing your tear away ounces best thing to do all right always have your uh, your guides all right so there's different companies uh, that sell the backing they have their guides on how thick your tear away and your cutaway is Biggest thing you want to do is sample, sample, sample. You want to sample your material. You want to sample whatever, whatever garment you're using. Okay. You want to sample it out. You want to throw it in the washer and the dryer for X amount of times just to be a hundred percent sure you have the correct backing on whatever type of garment you're using. Of course, there's not a, a 100% sure cheat sheet that tells you, Hey, if you're going to do this project, you have to use this, okay? There's just common practice, okay? You're gonna see cheat sheets out there. That doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna fit your project 100%. It's all about sampling out and testing, testing, testing. Always be testing. So these are the four items you have to, have to, have to know inside out, okay? You gotta know all the information. You gotta know all the codes, all the different weights, okay? But if you are taking notes today, then you already have all that information, okay? The biggest thing here today is make sure you keep on practicing, you keep on sampling, okay? So the more experience you get, the more kind of, the more you know how to interchange different types of settings, different types of material, okay? That's the biggest thing here today. But a lot of the materials that we talked about today Okay, a lot of that is just general practice that pretty much is very safe to use throughout the embroidery industry. All right, so if you have any questions or comments, like always, make sure you leave them down below because we are always learning every single day and we are always learning amongst each other. 
okay so if you have any additional information to add on make sure you leave it down below and i'll see you on the next one peace